Overwatch League might be doomed to fail, a new Witcher game is in the works, Elden Ring cheaters are ruining save files, and much more on Today in Gaming. Hey guys, Level Cap here. The PC beta for Overwatch 2 starts on April 26th. It'll offer PvP matches on new maps with a new hero called Sojourn, and it reworks existing heroes Orisa, Doomfist, Bastion, and Sombra. Signups are currently live on Blizzard's website for the game, and there will be multiple beta phases before launch. So if you don't get into this one, chances are that you'll get into one later on. The beta will feature four new maps called Circuit Royale, Midtown, Toronto, and Rome. Those last two maps will offer a new game mode called Push. Across all maps and modes, a new ping system will be available to help communicate with your teammates. The betas are being done in part because, well, the fifth season of Overwatch League starts in May and it's going to be using Overwatch 2. League players have already been practicing on beta builds of the game, but opening up the beta to the general population will help the devs uncover balance issues or technical problems the pros might have not encountered yet. And while this news should sound exciting in general, it is happening in the shadow of Activision Blizzard's workplace harassment controversy. The state of California's ongoing lawsuit against the company details years of abuse, harassment, assaults, and more. Recently, a Wall Street Journal report implicated CEO Bobby Kotick had played a role in suppressing the allegations. It also alleged Kotick shielded at least one senior employee from the consequences of an internal investigation that found him guilty of assaulting a junior employee. Xbox head Phil Spencer quickly negotiated a buyout of Activision Blizzard with Kotick barely 24 hours after the Wall Street Journal's report. On top of these allegations, COVID forced Activision Blizzard to rework its live event plans in early 2021. They decided to focus more on online events and subsequently laid off 50 employees from their live events group. And all of this turmoil is apparently costing Overwatch League sponsorship deals. Typically, big esports tournaments have dozens of official sponsorships that help fund the event, but not a single sponsorship has been announced for the upcoming Overwatch League season. Many of the league's existing sponsors dropped out after the initial wave of workplace harassment allegations made headlines last year. Even Comcast, who owns an Overwatch League team, has confirmed that they will not be sponsoring the league this season. Ultimately, it's tough to say what the future holds for Overwatch, its esports scene, and even Blizzard itself. The acquisition by Xbox is sure to shake things up, hopefully it's all for the better. But if Overwatch League can't attract new sponsors, who's to say how long Blizzard will continue bankrolling it? Unlike most esports leagues, Overwatch League gives its players salaries and benefits, which is a lot to pay for on top of the usual expenses like production costs and prize pools. Overwatch League could be one of the first blockbuster leagues to fail. In more positive Activision-related news, 90,000 cheaters were banned in a massive wave this past week from Call of Duty Warzone and Vanguard. The cheaters were detected using the developer's Ricochet anti-cheat tool. It's proving to be a much more effective countermeasure to cheating than their previous tools. However, these massive bans aren't exactly a new thing for Warzone. Since Warzone's launch, Activision has banned 940,000 accounts. Previous ban waves have taken out 50 or 60,000 players at once. Ricochet gives the developers the ability to detect cheaters in real time and shield legitimate players from them. It does this in a variety of ways. One is to make the cheaters deal one damage per shot. That effectively makes it impossible for them to get a kill. Footage of this happening has been buzzing on social media for months and the devs recently confirmed it's part of their reverse engineering process. The next Witcher game is officially in development. CD Projekt Red announced that a new saga begins on all of their social media accounts. They're building it in Unreal Engine 5 instead of their in-house Red Engine, which all of their previous Witcher titles used. Beyond these details, nothing was revealed about the game like launch window, platforms, or even if it'll feature the franchise's main character, Geralt. The title is being developed as part of a multi-year collaboration with Unreal's developer Epic Games. They're covering the licensing and assistance with the engine tech, though it's unclear what CD Projekt Red are doing in exchange. The next Witcher title will not be an Epic Game Store exclusive. Unfortunately for Elden Ring players, their anti-cheat situation has become a bit dire. Players are reporting an exploit being abused by hackers who invade them. The invader crashes your game, and when you reboot, you're stuck in a failing death loop. A similar exploit was discovered in Dark Souls 3, a previous title by Elden Ring's developer. Hopefully they have a quick fix in the works. From's anti-cheat and exploit detection isn't exactly well regarded. Modders have created special tools and online modes specifically to combat cheating and 
Dark Souls titles over the years. If you find yourself the victim of this Elden Ring exploit, there is a Reddit post with detailed instructions on fixing it linked below. The simple version is to force quit the game as soon as it loads your save, reopen it, open your map, and spam the confirm button. If you do it quickly enough, you should respond safe and sound. Fortnite's latest season made a significant change to the gameplay. Building has been removed from casual mode. It's part of the seasonal narrative and will be restored as the season progresses. In the meantime, the devs have tweaked a few things to keep fights fair. All the players will have a recharging overshield that gives them an extra 50 HP, the default run speed will be faster, sliding or sprinting into a door will force it open, and you can also mantle on ledges that are too tall to jump to normally. Fortnite has dabbled with build-free modes and events in the past, but they've generally been limited to a specific area of the map. Building is still enabled in competitive, creative, and save the world mode. The devs might be using data from this event to rework building when it's reintroduced. Sniper Elite 5 is launching on May 26. It's the latest title in the long-running World War II tactical sniper franchise. This time around, players will shoot their way through France in 1944 as a U.S. Ranger working with the French Resistance. The goal is to stop a secret Nazi project. And like last titles, Elite 5 has solo and co-op modes. It'll also include an invader mode that drops other players into your session. At specific points in the campaign, you'll be able to call in another player for additional support. The X-ray kill cams that the franchise is most well known for have been updated with improved gore, SMGs, and also pistols can trigger the kill cam as well. Overall, Sniper Elite 5 looks like a pretty fresh take on a reliably solid franchise. And if you're looking to nutshot some Nazis, well then, this is the game for you. The developers of the extremely popular Unity game engine released a new tech demo and, well frankly, it's incredible. It's called Enemies and showcases an overhaul character system with new skin shaders, real-time hair based on strands, ray tracing, native DLSS, and more. Many people probably think of Unity as the indie engine for cheap-looking games. And while there are plenty of impressive-looking Unity titles like Escape from Tarkov and Rust, the demo looks way more cutting-edge. It'll be interesting to see what the developers can do with these updated tools when they're released later this year. If you're new around here, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying our coverage. If so, consider subscribing. It'll keep you in the loop whenever I upload and helps these videos reach more viewers. Let us know in the comments if a particular story stood out to you. Reviews of the supernatural horror FPS Ghostwire Tokyo are, well, mixed. Reviewers are praising the game's attention to detail, especially with its environments. And of course, the game is set in, well, Tokyo, as the name would suggest. Reviewers familiar with the city say that the game captures it expertly while blending in iconic Japanese culture and myths. The negative sticking point for many reviewers seems to be the overly simplistic combat and repetitive mission design. The game is relatively short at about 15 to 20 hours, depending on your playstyle, so it doesn't overstay its welcome to try and stretch itself out. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.